Thank you, Paul, and sorry for joining late in another webinar. So um, I stole some ideas from Weil from one of our last uh, consultations and uh, published a short piece on IDN uh, in which I made some ideas about this intercessional work uh, that Weil was uh, talking about. Um, I want to focus more on some of the technical aspects of, of a future zone uh, nuclear, also WMD. Um, we are now coming up to nearly 50 years since the first resolution was put up at the General Assembly in 1974. We, we are beyond 25 years since the 1995 resolution. And although some work was done under Acres and then Yakolaeva did some consultations and there were some other initiatives through uh, the Arab League and so on, um, but there hasn't been that much work done. And so people in a sense have been really marking time. And I think the Middle East zone issue for some states of the region has become more of a political issue rather than something to actually move on. We have these resolutions in the General Assembly every year. We have a resolution at the IAEA every year. Everyone forgets about it for a whole year and then they come back. Uh, this second session of the Middle East conference that's taking place shortly I was speaking to somebody from the from the area the other day, and they were commenting that they thought that not sufficient preparations had been done for the second session, which is quite in marked contrast to what is happening with regard to the NPT review conference, where there have been a number of uh, online discussions with the president designate and, and others. So partly, I think it's the fault of the states of the region for, for not taking this as seriously as they should. So focusing on some of the more specific items, uh, at the IAEA in, in, in 2000, the a decision was adopted to have an international forum on the experience of other zones that would be relevant for the Middle East. And when I joined the IAEA, that was the first thing that the then IAEA Director General dumped in my lap. It took me two years of these so-called proximity talks, and by 2004, the, we had an uh, agreement uh, on an agenda for holding such a forum, and I'll just read out some of those which are still actually uh, relevant, um, which would be the geographic dele delineation, scope, verification, security assurances, other issues such as the role of extra regional states, uh, nature of arrangements, uh, what level of peaceful activities would be permitted, whether there would be limitations on enrichment or reprocessing, uh, whether there might be joint uh, uranium enrichment centers or joint fuel uh, production centers or joint energy centers, and also joint verification arrangements, a little bit like ABAC among the states of the region themselves for their own verification to supplement uh, what the IAEA is doing uh, under the NPT Comprehensive Safe Cards Agreement. Uh, unfortunately, such a forum was not held for seven more years until 2011. And the view always was that this would be the first among a series uh, but then in my view, and I've mentioned this to a while, the states of the region bungled it and it was a one-time event. But also, I think some of the external states, uh, including some of the NPT depositories wanted to make sure that they would kill this particular track. But every year there is a report by the IAEA Director General. And uh, I might recall that in 1988, um, then the Director General um, Hans Blix issued a technical study on different modalities on the application of safeguards in the Middle East. Uh, in, in my reports, I also referred to it. Uh, and I'm surprised that, you know, there is no talk among the states of the region here, where all states of the region are present at the IAEA to resurrect this, to update what the modalities might be, since safeguards techniques and procedures have moved on from 1988 through the additional protocol through state level approach, information driven safeguards, and so on, where a lot of technical work could be done so that if and when there is political agreement to have a treaty, you, one could bring this technical body of knowledge to the table. Uh, you might recall that in the preparations for the comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty, there were these groups of seismic and technical experts uh, that carried out a lot of work on verification, which was very useful when the CTBT was actually being uh, negotiated. So what I'm proposing for this session, which uh, is unlikely to happen, but perhaps could be done uh, later on, is to establish working groups 
to establish a specific working group here in Vienna. Uh, it needn't include all states of the region. They could designate three or four who could focus on aspects of the nuclear part. You could do the same in The Hague to focus on aspects of the chemical uh, part of the WMD zone in Geneva on uh, with the ISU, the Implementation Support Unit on the Biological and Toxin Weapons part. How we deal with delivery systems is, is still a question mark. Uh, so this is not rocket science. You have these diplomats there. They go to these various meetings at the OPCW, at the ISU, at the IAEA, and it's easily possible to convene small technical working groups, get advice uh, and assistance from the staff of these organizations, uh, study some of the new procedures for verification, information collection uh, that would be considered as part of a zonal treaty. Uh, this work would also help uh, NGOs that are working in the states of the region to better equip them to do their own analysis using satellite imagery, using other forms of open source um, uh, information, but this requires political will, will, it requires vision, it requires leadership, and this unfortunately is sadly wanting. I don't see much coming out, unfortunately, much coming out of the second session. I think it will just roll over a new political declaration. People will pack their bags, go home, and look to coming back in 2022 or, or whenever. So I'm, I was hoping to get some uh, energy going behind this idea of the working groups and some of my discussions here in Vienna, but it is sadly lacking. So I don't know what more we can do. Uh, while was talking about, you know, helping these diplomats, uh, but the diplomats keep on changing. There are very few of them who continue on the portfolio. So it's a constant re-education uh, effort. There is no shortage of materials produced by different NGOs over previous years. They're there for the taking, but nobody is bringing this to their attention. There have been some useful projects from Unity or, uh, and others that have played an important uh, role. Uh, but unless we have more political interest from the delegations themselves, uh, I don't see much progress happening, un uh, unfortunately. So I wish uh, Beto, all success in continuing with our activities and to do more of these types of online and in-person discussions when the situation allows to try and identify some key uh, diplomats who are willing to devote some time and energy to try and develop certain elements that can be brought to the table uh, at the next session of this conference. And also in venues like the IAEA General Conference at the OPCW, at the First Committee, in the NPT, which is another opportunity coming up uh, in, in January. Thank you, Paul.